Well, welcome to this video. It is Tuesday the 7th of April. Now, we've dealt with quite a lot of news and fairly complex topics lately, so I wanted to do a video where we sort of go back to basics, a bit of revision as it were. So if you're newish to this topic, this will be worth uh, looking at in more detail. Now, if you're already familiar with all the basic stuff, you might want to skip this video, but of course there's always other things that you can you can learn as you go through. And I want to use the Irish Public Information Leaflet as a guide to doing this because it's very good. And the Irish government were actually one of the uh, early governments to instigate preventative measures against uh, the COVID-19 disease, the coronavirus. So let's have a look at what they're saying. So they're talking about coronavirus, this new virus that's come out of um, China. It's a zoonotic virus and it's spread from animals into humans and is now spreading rapidly around the world from human to human, as you know. So COVID-19 stands CO, um, Corona, VI, virus, D disease, first identified in 19. So COVID-19 is the name of the disease caused by this novel coronavirus. And it can affect the lungs and the airways, and it's caused by this coronavirus. So it's spread in droplet infection, in sneezes, <clears throat> and also to some extent when people are just breathing out when they're talking. So it's spread mostly from the infected lungs and airways of an infected person. That's where the infection comes from. The virus can easily be spread from people that aren't infected, from people that are infected to people that are not infected. This is how it's spread around the world. And it's fairly easily spread and people are infectious normally for six or seven days after they've been infected. But people are also infectious while they still have symptoms. This is why it's important for people to carry on isolating even after five or six or seven days if they still have symptoms. And as well as spreading in the breath, it can spread via surfaces. So someone can breathe that onto a surface, someone can touch those surfaces with their hands and get the virus in through their eyes, their nose, or their mouth. <clears throat> now, why are we making such a fuss about this disease? Well, th this explains it perfectly, really. 80% of people will get a mild illness, but 14% of people will suffer a, a more severe illness to the point where they might need some medical help. And 6% of cases are critical. Their lives are at risk if they get this infection. Now, I don't know why some people get a very mild illness and some people get a very severe illness. It's not clear why. Generally speaking, older people get more severe conditions and people with other comorbidities, that's diseases they have already, get more severe conditions. So like hypertension, high blood pressure, chronic lung disease, chronic heart disease are more likely to get more severe disease. Also people that are immunosuppressed. But most people, the good news is most people will get a minor illness. In fact, many people don't even know they've had it. But the problem is this minority that get the more, more severe case. And of course, if we're talking about millions of infections around the world, 14% and 6% of millions of cases is very high. That's why this disease is such a problem. So the symptoms... <clears throat> Uh, can take up to 14 days for symptoms to appear. So there's a 14 day, up to a 14 day incubation period. The incubation period is the time from when someone is exposed to the virus up until the time they first develop symptoms. And that can be two to 14 days. For most people, it's five or six days is the most common. And when symptoms appear, there can be cough, normally a dry cough, high temperatures above over 38 degrees centigrade, shortness of breath and breathing difficulties. These are the classic features. There can also be diarrhea in some cases that's not mentioned on this, on this handout. Usually a dry cough and fever are the most common features. So you may, may display one, some or all of these features. So someone should self-isolate assuming they have the disease, if they have a dry cough that's new, a new onset of dry cough, or they have a fever, one or the other. And these are the features may or may not go with it, such as shortness of breath, breathing difficulty. Very often people have painful muscles. Very often there's nausea. Sometimes there's headache. 
also features of this condition. Contact people for medical help, of course, by phone rather than going around there because we don't want to infect people if we can avoid it. <clears throat> now, this thing here is con con comparing um, flu, cold and COVID-19. I'm, I'm going to come back to that. Now, um, how can I protect myself from getting it and how can I protect my family? Well, we can get this from contaminated surfaces. So regular hand washing is very important and avoid touching your hands with your face. Soap and water kill the virus. Soap kills the virus. The virus has a fatty outer layer and it will be killed by soap. If soap and running water are not available, then 60% alcohol will also kill the virus. So the alcohol in your whiskey bottle is normally 40%. You need stronger than that as, as occurs in these alcohol-based hand gels. And you have to make sure you wash your hands properly, getting in all the bits of your hands. So it's, we've done videos on this, so it's forward and side to side, and your thumbs in this way, and up to your wrists. So it's a very thorough hand washing. It should take at least 20 seconds. And if you're using alcohol um, gels, then keep washing your hands until the alcohol is fully evaporated. Rinse your hands under running water if you're using soap and water. <clears throat> Dry your hands with a clean paper towel and then dispose of it. And there's lots of videos on this. Uh, most governments have published videos on this and I, I've published a video on this as well. When coughing or sneezing, because this, this is how the disease is going to be spread worse. If you sneeze, the, 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 the virus can be projected out with a lot of force over a long distance. So it's very important you don't sneeze into the air around about us because you'll get a cloud of infection around about you. So ideally we want to sneeze into a tissue and then fold that tissue inwards and dispose of it. If you're caught outside unawares, and you, then you will cough into your elbow so as not to cough in public places. The worst thing we can do is cough this virus and sneeze, sneeze this virus out <clears throat> into public places where there might, people might be shopping or whatever. Clean and disinfect frequently touched surfaces, so the doorknobs in your house, the doorknobs on your car, your steering wheel, and use uh, household disinfectants for that. And they'll say if they kill viruses on the, on the manufacturer's um, instructions. Right, social contact is suspended all over the world for the next, we don't know how long, for the next few weeks probably. So no shaking hands, no social hugs, no social kisses, social distances from all people to decrease the spread of the virus. We must all be separated from each other for a period of time. And this means that people who have the virus will not give the virus to people who do not have the virus. Now, part of the reason this virus has spread so much and so quickly is that people can be shedding the virus. They can be breathing the virus out, coughing the virus out, sneezing the virus out onto surfaces, contaminating people in the air, contaminating surfaces before they realize they are sick. This is called pre-symptomatic transmission. And also a minority of people can spread the virus and never get symptoms. They're called asymptomatic transmitters. So basically everyone has to assume that they are infected and try and protect other people accordingly. That's the best way to think about it. Your job is to protect everyone else. So shake, um, no, don't, don't shake hands. Social distancing. So <clears throat> everyone has to just mix with the people in their household, not people outside their household. So you cannot go to your friends for a cup of tea. They cannot come into your house. You cannot go and visit your parents at the moment. You cannot go and visit your children that live in a separate household from you. Households need to be isolated from each other at the moment to prevent spread of this virus. Reduce the number of people you meet a day. And if you do meet them, be two or three metres apart from them and make it outside. Do not meet people indoors because the virus will spread more easily indoors in a closed, enclosed environment. So uh, reduce interactions. If you're working, work out ways to maintain two or three metres social distance from everyone else that you come into contact with at work as far as that is possible. If you're a healthcare provider and you do have to come into close contact with people, then um, you need to wear personal protective equipment. And very often infected people can wear masks as well that will prevent them shedding as much of the virus. 
Keep separate by at least one metre. I disagree with the Irish government here. It needs to be more than that. And I've actually just made a video uh, recently that I'll be broadcasting soon that shows why it needs to be more than that. So at least two metres <clears throat> and sometimes more, more than that, especially if someone is coughing or sneezing. Don't shake hands. <clears throat> Avoid um, communal sleeping areas. Now, if um, a pa partners at home, husband and wife or whatever, uh, partners at home, one becomes symptomatic, then they should sleep in a separate room from the non-infected partner if they have a separate room, if that's possible. So they should be physically separated as much as possible because we want the uninfected person to get as low a dose of the virus as is possible. So the sick person should be in a room on their own with the door shut and, if possible, the window open to dilute the virus that is in the sick room. Avoid crowded places, absolutely. That's completely forbidden for the time being. Work from home, if possible. And this is clearly going to have significant economic impacts on people, and this is, this is known. When in crowded settings like public transport or supermarket, practice personal protective measures. So avoid touching your eyes and mouth. Clean your hands when you've finished. And you can wear gloves as well if you want. That's all, all absolutely fine. Now, we've said that some people are more at risk. Some people are more likely to be in this minority of people that get severe disease. So there are a group of people who'd be more at risk if they catch it. So it's not saying that these people are more at risk of catching it. Anyone can catch it. But these are more at risk of developing severe complications. So it's the older people are, the more likely they are to get severe complications. People with long-term medical conditions, what we call comorbidities. People whose immune system are impaired. I'm very worried about people with HIV at the moment. We don't know quite how that's going to pan out in African countries, for example. Patients with any condition that can affect the respiratory function, such as bronchitis or emphysema or chronic asthma. Residents of nursing homes and people in uh, communities, um, people that are living together in communities. So like prisons, ships, care homes are at particular risk because they often live in close, indoor, confined quarters. All over 50s with, the, uh, with a specialist disability health service. Again, this is older people with disabilities and other comorbidities. So people with health problems. So this is the Irish support. There will be support where you are. Find out what the support is where you are. And of course, find out who the vulnerable people are in your area and work out how people are going to help them. So if you're feeling unwell, any of these symptoms, such as a fever or cough, you should self-isolate. You should go in a room in your own house, shut the door and open the window because you want to avoid exposure to others in your household. And of course, you don't want to be spreading it to other people in the community. If you're talking to healthcare providers, do so on the phone in the first instance and they will advise you accordingly. So limiting social interactions or even stopping social interactions. Avoid contact with other people. So social situations are basically suspended. So for now, no one in the world, pretty well everywhere in the world, no one should be going to the pub. No one should be eating in restaurants. Normal life, unfortunately, is suspended. This is a pandemic. This is unprecedented in our lifetimes. So reduce, I would say, eliminate contact with people outside the workplace or the home. Keep two to three metres away from other people. Physical contact is out of the question. Avoid crowded places. I think everyone's doing this now. Work from home if possible. Now, having said that, in some parts of the world, this is not being adhered to. And that means these parts of the world are at risk from cluster outbreaks of the COVID-19 disease. So this is applying to pretty well everywhere at the moment. Now, the Irish government and the UK government are saying you can go outside for exercise on your own, but do not abuse this. This does not mean you can go to the park for a picnic or a barbecue. It does not mean you can sit by the lake for an hour. It just means you can walk through a park or jog through a park, 
briefly just to get some exercise and then go home again. And th 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 this idea from the Irish government here is avoid spending more than 15 minutes in close contact with other people. It's based on, on a quite old data, this actually, that, that close contact was defined as, as being in contact with someone for more than 15 minutes. And this idea that you wouldn't catch the virus in five minutes if you're in close contact with someone. This is now out of date. This is far too conservative. You can catch the virus much more quickly than that from someone who is shedding a high viral load. So I think this is a bit misleading. This is saying, look, if you want to spend 14 minutes with someone, that's OK. That is not the case. The virus can spread from person to person a lot more quickly than 15 minutes. So we have to basically suspend social contact. <clears throat> if you're told to stay at home, so there's two things about staying at home, that, that people with the disease are isolated, but people that have got the disease and have come into contact with other people round about them, they need to quarantine themselves for 14 days in case they develop the symptoms because the incubation period is 14 days. And especially towards the end of the incubation period, in the few days before someone develops symptoms, a person becomes infectious. So basically, people that have been exposed to someone who is infected has to assume that they've been infected. Unless they pass for 14 days without symptoms, then they can assume they haven't got it. But they must wait for those 14 days in quarantine. So tell people about it. Get help. <clears throat> all these things make sense and as well as that look around for people that you can help this is really a time for coordinated community action all over the world this is a real opportunity to help people there will be people in your area that need your help and if you need help don't be shy in asking for it this is not a time for pride this is a time for human cooperation on a great scale locally and globally Make sure you get your medicines. In, in Ireland, in the UK, there's no problem with supplies of medicines or food. So there's no need to panic hoard medicines in the UK or Ireland. There's no need to panic buy food. If you have symptoms, of course, you have to be self-isolated. You cannot go out. Bear in mind, you don't want to infect other members of your household if you can avoid it. So self-isolation means staying indoors, completely avoiding contact with other people. I like that word there, completely. Completely avoiding contact with other people. This is to stop other people getting it. You must self-isolate and contact healthcare providers by phone, not in person. They will advise you if you need to go for testing. They will advise you if you need to go for further medical help. So stay at home. Keep away from other people in your home as much as you can. Now, the other people in your household might have had the disease already. That's possible. But we still want to reduce the amount of virus that people are exposed to. This is called viral load. Because new research is showing that the more viruses you're exposed to, then potentially the more serious a disease you can get. So reduce the viral load of your children, your parents, your, your partner, whoever is in the household with you protect them from the virus that you may well be shedding keep your hands clean keep surfaces clean immaculate respiratory hygiene so cough into a tissue fold it up and then I think a good idea is to have a separate plastic bag that you can put the tissues in and then you can seal that plastic bag and dispose of it hygienically so we're not contaminating people through our dirty tissues Avoid sharing utensils. So a sick person should have their own cups, their own towels. If possible, their own bathroom. It's not always possible, of course, but if possible, isolate them as much as you can and as much as the household can. Now, monitor symptoms. Most people have a mild illness, so most people will just self-isolate for a period of time and then return to normal duties after a week or so. They might feel a bit tired for a week after that, to be fair, but most people will have minor symptoms but monitor someone in case they get worse and again we've done videos uh, on this channel in great detail looking about uh, looking at that if people are having increasing breathing difficulties and the complications are actually more likely to occur in the second week after symptoms arise in the second week of the illness keep the house clean with normal household disinfectants 
read the manufacturer's instructions and see what kills viruses. Now, dirty laundry, especially if someone's sick, if someone's sick, they'll be shedding virus onto their clothes and onto their bed clothes. So we have to consider these to be contaminated. So we can think about detergents and high temperatures and cleaning surfaces. So washing clothes, especially of a sick person at higher temperatures than you might normally wash. Yeah, good, the pointing out about plastic bags here, collecting rubbish, keep everything all neat and tidy, all packed away. There's, there's cases in China that are actually documented of nurses and doctors who were working in contaminated areas. And then when they went into the changing rooms, they were taking the clothes off, taking the scrubs off or whatever to change into the normal clothes. And that was flapping the virus up into the air and people caught the infection that way. So a lot of infection was actually spread in staff rooms. So it just shows the importance of just folding clothes up generally, gently, folding bed clothes inwards gently, and then putting them in the wash. And the wash, the combination of the heat and the soapy water will kill the viruses. And after washing, the, the clothes will be safe again. But before washing, bear in mind that there's viruses in the clothes and we have to keep them from contaminating other people. Keeping well during self-isolation, so drink plenty. If you don't want to eat, uh, then don't eat. If you feel like eating, then eat. It's just whatever you fancy, but do drink plenty of water. Bear in mind that people who are self-isolating are going to be a bit frustrated, probably bored, maybe a bit depressed, and try and support them how you can with telephone calls, with conversations through a glass window, with social media. Make sure no one feels alone at this time. And there's some important communications from the French government that advise people not to take uh, ibuprofen when they had a fever. So it's probably best not to take ibuprofen if you have a fever. And in my view, for adults, my, my view is that fever is a natural defence mechanism. So you're going to feel bad when you have the fever, but when you're sick, you're supposed to feel bad. So personally, I think if you can avoid taking drugs like paracetamol or in America, acetaminophen, to reduce fever, that is going to help you to get better quickly and in my view, make complications less likely. So don't feel as soon as you have a temperature of just over normal, you have to take paracetamol to bring it down. Fever is part of the body's normal protective response mechanisms. Talk to your own doctor about that, see what he thinks, but that's my view. More information is available everywhere. So, um, I think I think it's important to go over those points because we mustn't forget the basic things. Now, having said that, I have got some uh, m sort of fairly scientific things I'm working on at the moment. So, w when I get those prepared, I will bring them to you. So, so do tune back in. But if, if you need to share this with people who need the basic instructions, maybe someone you know who's not quite obeying the rules as they should then feel free to uh, to bounce this onto them if you think it would help. If it doesn't help, then it's, uh, it's no help, but uh, let, let's hope it does.